So today I want to talk about automation yet again, but I want to focus on specific instances of it. And one area of automation that I find quite fascinating and relevant is that of machine translation. So many of you might be aware, some of you not, that I have a, a background in translation, which is to say I have an advanced degree in it, and not just sort of flowery literary shit. It was a, a MS, uh, MSc, a Master's of Science from Imperial College London, um, which covered not just translation, but also the software and, and things related to it. And uh, at the time, this is ages ago, and I subsequently worked for several years in the translation industry uh, and have not done so for a while now, people were fairly skeptical of the notion of the efficacy of machine translation, which is to say that people thought, well, yeah, you can do it, but it's not that good. It lacks accuracy. It lacks uh, precision, um, things like nuance are, are left out, all these things. And uh, so there were some people that thought, well, you know, we might get there. And But most people, I would say, the large majority, were pretty skeptical of this endeavor. You fast forward to 2016, uh, and I'm going to be reading a snippet um, uh, off of this uh, PDF. I'll provide a link to this as well as other things I'm talking about. 2016, and things have progressed since then, uh, obviously. Uh, Things have moved on quite a bit. So the title of this PDF, this publication, is Google's Neural Machine Translation System, Bridging the Gap Between Human and Machine Translation. And the abstract is very technical, and I have a background in it, so I can kind of understand it, but reading the entire thing off would be pointless. I really just want to get to the gist of it. And if you want to read the entire publication, you are free to do so. Um, and because I'll be posting a link to it. So the most relevant snippet is on the WMT, which stands for Workshop for Machine Translation 14, English to French and English to German benchmarks, GNMT, which is the Google Neural Machine Translation System, achieves competitive results to state of the art. Using a human side-by-side -side evaluation on a set of isolated simple sentences, it reduces translation errors by an average of 60% compared to Google's phrase-based production system. And things are moving on ahead. As I said, if you really are interested in this, you can read the entire publication. It's very technical. And even though I have a background in this, sometimes, yeah, it gets confusing even for me because I haven't looked into this for a while. But in any event, um, this shows that things are progressing along quite well. Further anecdotal evidence of this is a conversation I had with a, a good friend of mine who is the, um, the CEO of several businesses. And... Uh, yeah, basically, um, things are catching up. Um, he was saying that he's at a stage now where he can uh, effectively hire translators, not as translators, but as sort of proofreaders, and subsequently, of course, pay them less money because the the translation, the mach machine translation, um, is so good now that it is approximating, in certain language pairs, that's an important aspect, uh, the human capacity to do so. Things like French, English, German. See, I would I would be, if I were to try, those were my language pairs, uh, German to English, French to English. If I were to try that these days, I would probably be out of the market. I mean, or at least it'd be very difficult just because it, it's so, these the machine translation process is improving a great deal. And of course, there are different, I guess you call them architectures uh, for this, um, but the, the neural machine translation uh, aspect is, is something that is, uh, well, very different. Because traditionally, machine translation was sort of phrase-based. You know, the, it's overly simplified, but you know, the, I guess the algorithm would look at phrases and, and try to piece things together. Um, neural machine translation operates in, in a different, uh, well, not entirely different way. Um, but uh, as you could read the article, I don't want to get too bogged down on the specificities of, of machine translation, because it might be boring for some people. Um, but I just, this demonstrates that something that was thought of as formerly untouchable, the ability to translate things and, 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 and in a fluid way, uh, is, is changing. Now, the, another, the other thing um, this friend of mine who runs multiple businesses uh, pointed out, and I pointed this out to him as well, I think prior to him pointing it out to me, is that um, expediency in a business is, of course, a, a huge asset. So a person making use of a, some kind of a software package that employs machine translation or, or algorithm, um, 
might be willing to accept the, lo the possible loss uh, incurred of inaccuracy. Let's say it's it's twenty percent off that what the human product would be, if it is a produced much faster and b uh, produced at a much uh, cheaper cost. So these are things to consider. And here another uh, relevant uh, piece of uh, information. This is from a Quartz article. We'll be posting links to that as well. Google says its new AI-powered translation tool scores nearly identically to human translators. So Google, and this was published by the gods. When What is the publication date here? Once again, okay, this is the same. <laughs> no coincidence, the same time as that, uh, that publication was uh, put out. So September of 2016. I'll read this off because it's not too technical and people will understand it. Starting today, Google will rely more heavily on artificial intelligence when it translates language. The new method, co called Google Machine Neural Translation, cuts down errors by 80% compared to its current algorithm and is nearly indistinguishable from human translation on standardized tests, the company said. Now, <clears throat> this should be pointed out that this is not universal for all language pairs. It, it does come down to specific ones. It's a radical change from how Google translates now, which is called phrase-based translation, which is standard for the industry. Under this method, an algorithm cuts up, cuts up a sentence, like one entered by a high schooler, trying to game their homework, and attempts to match words or phrases to a large dictionary. The new method takes that same large dictionary and uses it to train neural networks. So, I mean, this is overly simplified, but essentially you're, it's, a, it's a kind of a, a mechanical, a mechanized brain that is learning. Hence, uh, uh, machine learning, right? One breaks down sentence to uh, one breaks down the sentence to figure out what it means. The other generates text in the other language. Since AI algorithms don't rely on human logic, they can often find better ways to accomplish their task than what humans previously dreamt of in hand-coded algorithms. The network itself learns how to translate, shedding the rules that humans thought were best, and only focusing on the outcome. So there you go with the expediency. Um, and to push ahead, uh, that's why that's largely why Google's neural network translator makes such a radical jump in accuracy. For instance, the network no longer has to spend time splitting sentences into words or phrases. In tests where human and machine translated text is compared side by side, Google Translate previously ranked at 3.6 of 6 at Spanish to English, with 6 being a perfect translation. Humans generally rank at 5.1, and Google's new method hits 5.0. Google is releasing its new method for Mandarin Chinese first and then scaling to new languages over the coming months. So presumably this has already been implemented and I haven't really kept up to date in all the details of this, but this seems like a large excursion, but it's, it, it's demonstrable in the sense that this, uh, this technology, uh, this algorithm learning is a, really a game changer in an industry that was thought formerly untouchable, unassailable. Um, years ago when I was doing my degree, my course at Imperial, nobody really thought this would, would happen. It was kind of uh, not quite sci-fi, but but almost in the realm of sci-fi in the sense of like, mm, yeah, it's interesting, but it's sort of just mental masturbation. Well, people, technicians, mathematicians, linguists are working on this and it is improving day by day. And of course, uh, this is not unique to this industry. I mean, some things are, are pretty obvious. Take, uh, you know, the fully automated uh, restaurant. Place your order on an iPad and pick it up from a giant vending machine. First fully automated restaurant opens in San Francisco, but it only sells superfood uh, quinoa. That's that weird grain from South America for those who don't know. A San, San Francisco fast food restaurant has opened with no waiting staff or cashiers and instead dispenses its meals using a giant vending machine. Customers of Itza in the middle of the city's financial district order, very chic, order their dishes on iPads, which are prepared by staff in a hidden kitchen and delivered to the fully automated cubbies. The only staff that can be seen are in store to help customers with problems they may have with the software. And so on and so forth. I mean, these all seem like minor, um, minor instances, but... Um, they're not. I mean, the, the restaurant thing is much more obvious to people, but the translation thing, hardly. Um, expediency is key, and so as the system improves, it will get better and better, and uh, people will not want to hire human translators anymore because they're costly, they get tired, they make mistakes, and, and, and quite machine translation will eventually exceed human, uh, human capacity in this regard. And you know, 
one thing I want to address in this, and there's this just key example above all the translation aspect of a formerly unassailable industry. There are other examples of this, uh, you know, commercial tunes and, and, and melodies that are composed by AIs and what have you, is that there are a lot of people who will um, continually harp on sort of, well, you know, we had this issue with the Industrial Re- Revolution, but, you know, this time it's different. Well, uh, perhaps, uh, perhaps the, the people who say, you give that example are, are, are right, but I don't think so. Never before in the history of humanity have we had a complete robotization of various industries. A tractor might have replaced a, a plow horse, but they still needed a farmer to drive the tractor. Google is very uh, open about their uh, driving AI. Things will be changing and very soon. And the fact that a complicated cognitive task, such as tra- translation, which requires accuracy, years of, I know from personal experience, years of, of knowledge and study uh, can sort of just be done away with, in an, not in an instant, obviously, but essentially in an instant via a neural learning network. Well, that can be scary for many. And increasingly, so many of these industries that are, that are very complicated are going to be replaced. Now, I'm going to propose here that there is no conventional solution to this forthcoming problem, and it will be a problem, which is to say all the people who cling to traditional economic models, whether they're Keynesians or more sort of free market people, well, I don't think the free market itself will solve this. In fact, in many ways, the machine translation is one example of this, and, and the automated restaurant and, and you know driving jobs being taken over by AI. That will be the free market at work depriving people of employment opportunities because the free market uses what is best and most efficient. And if humans are not uh, are best at it or the most efficient at it, they will be replaced. Uh, there's no doubt uh, as that. And perhaps in coming uh, years, the entirety of how we think about economics as, as a sort of system of, 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 of scientific thought and, and philosophy might need to be revamped and, and reworked. If half the population or even more is put out of work, and, and maybe even as far as 80%, I mean, more and more jobs will be taken over by AI or robots, and the machining, we can call it that. And what are you going to do then? Now, a friend of mine uh, once said that, well, that'll just mean that uh, goods will be delivered at even cheaper prices to the masses. Well, where are the masses going to get an income from if uh, if they can't work? So, I mean, universal income, we've talked about this before, but I don't want to get too much into that. The point is, is that people need to take this very seriously. I don't know what the exact solution is to this, but they need to take the, the presence of this problem, which will ha- the problem is there. It will happen. They need to take it seriously so they can deal with it uh, accordingly. And, and there will be, there will, people will stumble into dealing with this and people will make mistakes because this is brand new. Industrial revolution was nothing compared to this. Machines that can translate things instantly. You know, rather than paying a human to labor for an entire night or several days, you do it for a fraction of the cost instantly or near instantly. And, you know, you could be a Luddite and say, well, let's just, let's reject this because it's going to harm people. But you got to go with the flow. I don't know how people will survive. And in coming years, if I'm still alive uh, during this time, I don't know how I'll survive, but we at least need to embrace the the relentlessness of these changes and and the fact that they are essentially ineluctable. They will be coming. And there will be no conventional, quote-unquote, free market solutions or not-so-free market solutions. I propose that we're going to need a completely different economic model, a completely different model of thought in in addressing this issue. Everyone, thanks for tuning in. I hope that was uh, informative and enjoyable. For those of you not familiar with machine translation or 
the workings, inner workings of that world. I've been out of the business for quite some time and haven't studied that specific tr- uh, subject for quite some time. But uh, picking up on this, reading up on this has been fascinating because of the enormous strides that have been made in the years uh, subsequent to both my working life in the translation industry as well as my uh, study life uh, prior to that. So uh, everyone, thanks for tuning in, and uh, and we'll check you out later, assuming I'm still alive. Take care. Bye-bye. If you like this video, please like, share, and subscribe. And if you enjoy my content, please consider making a donation or becoming a patron. Thanks for watching.